Good evening and welcome to another episode of Weather or Not. I'm your host, Matt Yurisavik, and I'm joined by our forecaster tonight, Hannah Evans. Hi. And Hannah, rain the second half of this past week has ushered in some chillier temperatures. Yes, so we will see a drop in temperatures for this weekend, but mostly sun and clouds, no rain this weekend. That's good to hear, especially after the amount of rain that fell this past week. Hannah will have all that and more coming up in just a minute. Also on tonight's show, we have Nature in the News Stories featuring the melting Arctic ice as well as the raging California wildfires. And then Christopher Tate joins us with a feature on the National Weather Service. But first, here's Nature in the News. Last winter, you may have noticed a lack of stink bugs. A study showed that the polar vortex, which is an area of low pressure that came from the polar regions into Pennsylvania, killed off about 95% of stink bugs. Stink bugs feast on gardens, making them a major agricultural pest. They also invade homes and become a nuisance as when you kill them, they smell. The below freezing temperatures that blew into Pennsylvania in the winter last year helped to kill the stink bugs or cause them to seek shelter until it became warm again. So the good news is that the cold weather is just around the corner to kill these bugs, but we will probably still encounter them this coming spring. When you think of a snowy holiday, most think about Christmas or Thanksgiving. Snow could also cover the ground in parts of the United States on Halloween. A white Halloween would be classified as at least one inch of snow on the ground on October 31st, or a measurable snowfall on that date of 0.1 inches or greater. The historical probabilities are not very high for this to occur over Pennsylvania, with only a few spots near Lake Erie with a slight chance between 2 and 10 percent. The Colorado Rockies have the greatest chance to see a white Halloween with anywhere from 20 to 60 percent chance. Snow isn't the only thing that could impact trick-or-treating. Temperatures also play a huge role in your costume choice across the country. Pennsylvania usually sees temperatures between about 45 and 55 degrees Fahrenheit at 6 p.m. on October 31st. But elsewhere around the country, temperatures could be flirting with the freezing mark. In 2011, temperatures were chilly and parts of the PA saw a white Halloween when an early season nor'easter blanketed much of central and eastern PA with as much as 10 inches of snow on October 30th. That was the last time we saw snow on Halloween. Since the early 1900s, glaciers and sea ice have been rapidly melting. This is mainly due to human activity. Carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases have increased, which contributes to the rising temperatures. Scientists have a theory that if these temperatures continue to rise, the Arctic could be ice-free by the summer of 2040. The question is, why is this an issue? One of the main problems is that the melting Arctic ice contributes to rising sea level. As the ocean levels rise, the ocean and coastal air create more severe storms, such as hurricanes and typhoons. As the Arctic ice continues to melt, ocean currents will continue to disrupt weather patterns all across the world and humans and wildlife will sure be impacted. Wildfires continue to rage in California. There are currently 12 active fires burning across the state. Earlier this week, a new fire started just to the north of Santa Monica. This fire, known as the Getty Fire, has prompted mandatory evacuations in the hills just north of town. The fire has also closed parts of the 405 freeway as firefighters continue to battle the blaze. The biggest fire raging in the state now is the Kincaid Fire. This blaze is located just north of Santa Rosa, California, and the fire has been burning for almost eight days and is still below 25 percent contained. The blaze has burned over 75,000 acres and counting. Firefighters are continuing to battle the flames from the ground and in the air as they race to contain the blaze before the winds increase. Windy conditions could send hot embers into the air and potentially spread the fire faster. Winds are expected to strengthen as the weekend nears and there is currently no rain in the forecast for the near future.
I'm Hannah Evans here with your Central PA forecast. So the cold front that has moved through this past week will cause a drop in temperatures for the upcoming weekend. So for Friday, we have this low cold front that moved through State College, which will bring some rain in the northeast region with a low pressure up there too. But for Saturday, this high pressure coming through will bring some sunshine into State College. We do have another cold front coming in in the Great Lakes region that will cause some rain up there. And for Sunday, we have the cold front moved through. We will have some sun, a little bit of clouds, a chance for AM showers, and it will be mostly breezy. So for Friday, we do have the chance of those AM showers, a high of 46. For Friday night, it is mostly clear with those temperatures dipping into the freezing temperatures with a low of 31. For Saturday, we have a high of 49, mostly sunny, again, some sun and clouds. And for Sunday, again, mostly sunny, some sun and clouds with a high of 45. Now here's Christopher Tate with the feature on the National Weather Service. If you're like most Americans, you check the weather forecast every day, perhaps multiple times per day. We here at Weather or Not give you a total of seven days of forecasts across our central PA forecast and our extended outlook. You might also check your phone's weather app, watch Penn State's Weather World every weekday, check your local TV station's forecast, or even visit a website like weather.com. Especially in the case of a forecast you see presented by a person, as opposed to an app, a human makes the forecast. But where do they get the data needed to make it? For that, let's take a cursory look at the National Weather Service, the Federal Weather Forecasting Service here in the United States. To best understand the National Weather Service's position in the federal government, let's take a top-down approach. Within the executive branch of the federal government is the U.S. Department of Commerce. In the Department of Commerce are some agencies you've likely heard of, the Office of the Inspector General, the Office of Public Affairs, the Patent and Trademark Office, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. NOAA itself is made up of several different agencies, many of which are focused on researching our oceans and our atmosphere. The National Weather Service is perhaps the best known agency within NOAA. The National Weather Service is a complex but well-organized entity. Built into it are regional headquarters and local offices, as well as categorical forecast offices. Let's take a look at those first. There are 12 national specialized centers within the NWS. I could spend quite a long time talking about each, so let's just focus on the biggest one, the National Centers for Environmental Prediction, or NCEP. NCEP is broken up into eight primary specialized offices that each staff some of the nation's most elite forecasters. The National Hurricane Center is responsible for making hurricane forecasts for the Atlantic and Western and Central Pacific Oceans. Whenever you see a forecast cone on television, you are seeing the product of the forecasters at the National Hurricane Center. The Storm Prediction Center is responsible for monitoring areas of the country likeliest to be affected by severe weather, specifically thunderstorms, hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes. The SPC is tasked with issuing severe thunderstorm watches and tornado watches for parts of the country that may see those types of weather on a given day, as well as researching improvements to severe weather forecasts. The Aviation Weather Center offers guidance to airlines and pilots when adverse weather is expected in the skies. If you've ever heard the pilot of your flight say that they're avoiding weather, the decision to do so was very likely based on a forecast from the AWC. This center also records PIREPs, or pilot reports, of weather conditions aloft, creating a vast network of mobile weather stations used to improve forecasts. The Weather Prediction Center issues Quantitative Precipitation Forecasts, or QPFs, which are maps that show how much rain may fall in a large area. The WPC also issues winter weather forecasts when there is a large winter event forecast to impact a large portion of the United States. The Ocean Prediction Center, formerly the Marine Prediction Center, issues five-day forecasts for waters north of 31 degrees latitude, or about the Florida-Georgia state line. The OPC also conducts research on verifying their own forecasts in areas where boats seldom travel, consequently where few observations can be taken. The Space Weather Prediction Center is based in Boulder, Colorado. The meteorologists there continuously monitor the outer edges of Earth's atmosphere for any anomalous amounts of solar particles heading towards Earth. 
Solar storms can impact everything from GPS to the International Space Station, even our local power grids here on Earth. The Environmental Modeling Center is always working to improve computer-based forecast models, which we forecasters rely on for guidance when trying to figure out the next few days' weather pattern. Lastly, the Climate Prediction Center looks at medium and long-range computer guidance and makes seasonal forecasts several months in advance. Usually, these forecasts are only for temperature and precipitation anomalies. Our friends at Up in the Air use the CPC's forecasts every week. Now, of course, INSEP isn't all of the National Weather Service. I haven't even talked about local forecasts yet. There are six regional headquarters dividing up the nation. Pennsylvania is part of the eastern region. Each region is composed of a handful of weather forecast offices, or WFOs. The 122 WFOs across the nation are the ones responsible for generating local forecasts and for issuing warnings when severe weather strikes. They are the ones most familiar with an area's local weather patterns and consequently are most apt at forecasting for it. The Central Pennsylvania WFO covers about 30 counties in Pennsylvania and is based right here in State College at Innovation Park. Each regional office is comprised of several other forecasting units which you can see listed here. No matter which part of the National Weather Service makes the forecast you read, from the local WFO to the Climate Prediction Center, our nation's brightest meteorological minds are always working hard to offer some of the best weather forecasts in the nation. Speaking of which, Hannah Evans is back next with our extended forecast. Hi everyone, it's Hannah back here with your extended forecast. So looking into our re weekend recap again, we see temperatures across the weekend for the highs being in the upper 40s and for the lows being in the low 30s, dipping into those freezing temperatures. A quiet weekend, we had, do have a chance for those AM showers on Friday, but otherwise mostly sunny with some clouds. So looking into the extended forecast into next week, those temperatures will be around average, maybe slightly above Monday through Friday, just sun and clouds, a calm week and a calm start to November met. And those temperatures around average where we like to see them this time of year. Yes. I know earlier in the show we asked the whiz quiz question and this dealt with when the temperatures were well above average in the month of November. That question was, what is the highest recorded temperature for State College in the month of November? Was it A, 71 degrees, B, 78 degrees, C, 81 degrees, or D, 85 degrees? And if you said C, 81 degrees, you are correct. And that actually happened in November of 1950. So it's been quite a while since we've seen those temperatures up there. And I know, at least in the near future, we won't be seeing anything that high. Yes, coming up this week, maybe even next week, temperatures are slightly above average, but nowhere near 80 degrees. That's good, because now that we're in the fall, we like to stay away from those kinds of temperatures. Yes, definitely. Yes, so that's all the time we have on tonight's episode. I'm your host, Matt Urasavik. And I'm Hannah Evans. Make sure you come back for another episode next week and have a great night.